All right, welcome back. We're now ready to restore our windows of our trailer. This is one of the last things to go on to the trailer. It's the first one to come off, last one to go on, and it really sets the tone for our vintage trailer. Thanks so much everyone for following along and watching. Um, we really enjoy creating this video series for you guys. I really wanted to create this window one because there was only a couple videos regarding vintage trailer and how to restore those. So I felt like there was a bit of a gap there that hopefully I can help out some other individuals. So taking us back, this is how we remove the windows. And you kind of notice there's like a gray substance on the back side of these windows. That's the butyl tape. It hadn't been replaced really since I think the trailer was built 65 years ago. So it was still a little bit pliable. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. First thing I was doing is stripping the windows, removing the paint from it. The trailer had been painted several times and they had painted over the windows. Just kind of a standard paint stripper will work great here. Sometimes you got to put just a second coat on. Uh, the main thing here is don't use a metal scraper. It'll scratch the aluminum, uh, and then you'll have to spend quite a bit of time trying to polish out any scratches. So just a stiff brush that I got here, like for dishes, works great to remove that paint. Next, you want to remove all your gaskets. Uh, usually, if you can get a hold of them, they remove pretty easily. Uh, this gasket, though, was giving me fits. Uh, this is actually, it doesn't seal this gasket, it just retains the window pane against the glazing tape, which is your sealing surface. So if you just warm it up a little bit, able to make it just pliable enough that you're able to kind of grab it and take it on out of there. So one of the key things is paying attention to your gaskets. So the what type of gasket you're removing, where was it located at, how was it installed, Take lots of pictures, make some notes, figure all that out ahead of time before you do the disassembly. Uh, and then a lot of windows are hair windows, H-E-H-R. So this one had the number at the very bottom that corresponded to the model number of the window. If you then take that to VintageTrailerGaskets.com, you'll be able to identify which exact gaskets that you need to purchase. So the next step, so I've gotten all the paint off. Uh, I now have to get the oxidation off that was kind of remnants of the screws that were in it. So some of the screws had rusted and kind of tarnished the aluminum a little bit. So what I'm using here is a little bit of sandpaper. Again, you only want to do this by hand. Don't get any sander or something out. You don't want to scratch that aluminum. It scratches easy. Use a high grit sandpaper um, and just time and elbow grease can get it out. Then you want a polishing compound. I tried using some of these. I could never really get it to work to form a polish. Instead, this Mother's Mag Aluminum Polish, I got it off of Amazon, along with all of these little pads, these buffing wheels that I was able to get. Just a little dab on there is all you need. Um, and I'm using just a standard drill here for this. So it doesn't have to be super, super high RPM. Of course, the higher the RPM, probably the better. Um, work in a small area. What you're trying to do is really heat up that surface until it's kind of hot to the touch. Um, and that helps to create that polish. So this is sped up just a little bit, but not too much work. Uh, and you can just wipe it off with just a paper towel or shop towel. And you can see the difference in the polish, you know, getting rid of that kind of cloudy aluminum that's typically there. So I wanted to show just kind of start to finish how long it would take. Um, for you to do one of these windows. And so what I've done here is this window is basically uh, one that I've removed the paint from, but that's as far as I had gone when I started here. Um, so first I wanted to disassemble it fully, uh, get it down to all of its individual parts. And then each of the parts, you want to sand them down like I was showing earlier, get kind of some of that tarnished cloudy stuff off of there before you then want to do some of the polishing steps. So it took about 45 minutes just hand sanding to get it fully sanded and prepped to start the polishing process. Um, so each window is going to take about an hour long. Uh, and you can see I'm starting to do the polishing now. Um, in total, I probably spent 
about 15 total hours to do all of my eight windows that were within my trailer. So it's quite a bit of time. Um, and just know that up front. It's definitely worth it to maintain these old windows within your trailer. And you can see there's a significant difference uh, in the shine of that. I also needed there to replace the glass. You know, someone had used just kind of some acrylic in the past. A good place for that is to just go to Lowe's and have them cut it to size for you. You'd, that way you don't have to worry about cutting glass yourself. Uh, the next step is finding replacement parts. So this is one of the parts that I wasn't able to find a replacement for. So I found some similar just square aluminum tubing uh, and had to make the part. Right? Usually you're not going to be able to find parts online for a lot of this. Um, it's going to be hard to scavenge old trailers and find uh, parts that you're going to be needing. So you're going to have to make some parts yourself. Uh, this, I'm testing the glazing seal. So between the window and the aluminum frame, there's a piece of tape called glazing tape. Uh, and that's the first seal of the window. And so this is the original glazing tape. And you can see the little droplets falling there on the underside. Um, and so you can tell this is some tape that needs to be replaced. I ended up replacing all the tape. Uh, you can easily remove those glass by just heating up the window a little bit and the glazing tape will kind of lose some of its adhesion. The next step is installing the gaskets and this is the second kind of point of entry for leaks. So again, you wanna make sure your orientation is correct. I've spread a little bit of oil on these as I was installing them. Uh, and then I made them a little extra long and had kind of a hump in each of the spots for it. Um, I think one of the failure modes for a lot of people when they install these gaskets is they inadvertently stretch the gasket as they're installing it. And it just kind of sits in a stretched fashion. Uh, and then a lot of people claim after a couple months that the gaskets shrink. Well, it's really the gaskets finally relaxed and shrank back up. So make sure you make them a little bit long uh, so you're not inadvertently stretching them. Next step is doing the screens. Make sure you cut the screen a little bit bigger than you would need. And then you got the gasket. It's just the standard screen gasket that you're going to use. Um, using the spline roller to put it into the groove. Um, you want to do this. Just keep it going all the way around. But you don't want to install the gasket all the way down yet. Uh, keep your screen just a little bit taut as you're going. Uh, and go all the way around the entire screen. Then when you've gone all the way around, only then do you start pushing the gasket all the way down and kind of do that a little bit in a star pattern uh, and your screen will become very taut. And then at that time you start removing the excess screen material. Before we reinstall these is we want to make sure they're clean. Uh, we assemble them. I put all new stainless steel hardware in these as well. Uh, some of the old stainless steel had started to rust slightly, you know, again, 65 years old. Um, so it was about time that it was going to need to be replaced. Um, so you want to make sure that you install these, make sure everything goes back together well before you uh, reinstall this on your trailer. It's a good idea to probably do a lot of the window repair early before um, you know, the last installation of your trailer. Next step is I had to make some window cranks. Uh, and then this was definitely something that was hard to find online. So the crank itself, I had to modify. Uh, it's actually called arm roof vent operator. Um, that's why I was able to find on Amazon. It was significantly cheaper than the ones that were listed on vintage trailer supply. Uh, but I had to modify the arm, make it a little bit shorter. Uh, my windows just weren't that tall of a window. Uh, so just by cutting down the arm and making this little hole here, uh, I was able to install these into my windows. So one of the keys here on this, you see those little clips that I'm sliding the screen into. Those are called screen retainer clips. I find that a lot of what you need when you're redoing these trailers is just simply know the name of what your part is that you're trying to, uh, to replace, just like this part. So this is a nylon friction pad. So this will go around the arm of that window crank and go down into the slot, and it basically stays within that slot and allows your window to go up and down 
um, and your arm did not fully come out of basically that guide. Um, that was another item that was really hard to identify, or even what is it called. Um, but once you know what it's called, uh, you're pretty good to go. It's very cheap, uh, and you can find those at Vintage Trailer Supply. So test, make sure it opens and closes. The third and final area that a window is going to seal is actually around the edge where it connects to the trailer itself. So we're putting new butyl tape here. This is something you want to do about probably every 15 years or so. Make sure that any of the tape is overlapping at the corners where you have two pieces of tape coming together because uh, you want to make sure that seals really tight. Uh, when you're screwing this in, make sure it's not super tight in the frame so that the frame doesn't shift and crack your window. Uh, and when you're tightening those screws down, make sure there's a little bit of squeeze out of that butyl tape. That ensures that you've got a good seal there. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, again, here's some links to the two other videos that I find really beneficial. Uh, and stick around too for our 12th and final video where we do our curtains and our cushions and final decoration of the trailer and just kind of a overall quick tour of the trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.